What's up, everybody? We have 10 minutes here. It is just myself, Jimmy. Mark is traveling. Hopefully, he'll be back soon. And Ryan Muckinhern across the table from me to discuss the topic of canted basses. Mm -hmm. You may also just hear them commonly referred to, just sort of a blanket, almost like uh, people call them tissues, Kleenex, 20 MOA rails. Mm -hmm. Um, And we see people ask questions on these things all the time. Yes. Or sometimes people don't even know that they exist. Sometimes people think they need them, but they don't. You know, uh, any number of things. But, uh, Ryan, you are here because you chat about these things pretty much every day on the phones. What, first off, is this? So, uh, there's a number of different ways we can cant the rifle scope down, and we'll get into why we would do that in a little bit here. Uh, But speaking specifically to the one-piece Picatinny rails, because this is becoming a very, very common mounting uh, platform or interface for your bolt-action rifles, even your semi-autos. Um, so it's a base, uh, like this Picatinny rail here for you watching on YouTube. Um, and it is lower in the front and higher in the back and a certain amount, usually most commonly 20 MOA. Um, and that's it. It's, it's literally just biasing our scope up in the back, down in the front. Um, there's a couple other different ways you can do it too. You can actually get it like an adjustable base or ring system mm-hmm. that is going to accomplish the same thing. And all we're doing is we're, we're tipping the front of the optic down um, relative to the, the barrel of the gun, if you will. So if we imagine this thing is perfectly level, um, you know, and we extended a line into infinity and then extended a line from the objective of the rifle scope into infinity, they would, um, they would converge eventually. Uh, we're, we're tipping the optic down. So the question is why? Right. Yep. Uh, and really this comes out of long range shooting, or at least that's, that's what the initial, uh, or, or general intended use is. If we bias the front of the optic down, what it forces us to do is zero our rifle scope lower in its overall travel range to allow us an an additional amount of adjustment in the upper end. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not stating that we're adding adjustment to the scope. Right. We're just kind of tricking the rifle scope into believing that it needs to be zeroed, like I said, closer towards the bottom of its range. Yeah, because if you have, let's say, we're going to throw out 80 MOA of adjustment Mm -hmm. in a rifle scope elevation, that is total adjustment. You'll see it listed in the specs of the rifle scope online or wherever. It might say, again, like I said, 80 MOA of total elevation travel. Now, if you, let's say in an ideal world, slap the scope on there at the center of its elevation travel, that does not mean you'll have 80 MOA from the center. It's it's bottom to top. And so you would in then in that case have 40 MOA yes. left over to dial for elevation at distance. And for some calibers, for some distances, that may not be enough. And so if you cheat the rifle scope downward, again, in this situation where you have the perfect setup and it's zeroed, otherwise would have been zeroed with a zero MOA base, uh, dead in the center of its travel, now we have to, in order to get it back to that point, because the scope has physically been tilted down, we have to bring it down 20 MOA to get to the same point. So now that we're zeroed, no longer in the center, but kind of in the uh, closer to the edge of one end of its travel range gives us 60 mm-hmm. MOA instead yeah. of 40 originally. Yep, um, It's kind of a weird thing to, uh, to imagine in your head, uh, especially because we're talking about the lower end of its travel range and the upper end of its travel range, but really that's when the reticle is up and versus the reticle being down. Anyway, you don't need to think about that. All you need to know is that it, it utilizes otherwise dead space yes. in your scope's travel yeah. range. And that's one of the bigger misconceptions with rifle scopes is when you see that total travel, that means, like like you'd stated earlier, from bottom to top or top to bottom, most rifle scopes, all of them from us, when you get them out of the box, are right in the optical center, in the, in the middle of that range. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, we would work under the assumption that you had a perfectly square rifle. If that's really not, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but it's very difficult anyway. A lot of times you're going to find yourself zeroing without a 20 MOA base above or well above that optical center line. Yep. Um, so when do you need one? It's a question that we get all the time. Guys say, hey, I, I bought this rifle. I want to hunt deer with it in uh, northern Wisconsin or in Montana or in you know, Georgia. Do I need a 20 MOA base? And for the most part, the answer is no. I, I would I would in terms argue, of hunting. Yeah, I would argue that very rarely would you need an MOA base or twenty MOA base or any graduated base for that matter. Yeah, there's other ones. Yeah. Forty and some of the really crazy ELR yep. guys are using like 
way up plus. there. Hundred yeah. plus yep. candid basis. Anyways, and I, I mean, we want to fit the 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 base and the application of the rifle, you know, and put all these together and assess whether we need it and and look at what your intended distances that you want to shoot at are. So for for like me personally, on all of my hunting rifles, I have zero MOA bases because I, I'm not going to bring that gun out to, you know, beyond 600 yards, we'll say. And and with all the rifles that I have personally, I don't have any that are really biased one way or the other, so I don't eat up a lot of adjustment. Just um, trying to get it zeroed. Yeah. And so all the usable MOA that I have um, from Optical Center and up is well within the the realm of um, you know doable with what that scope has, um, and I don't have to bias it down any further. Now, if we're going to go out and we're going to shoot long range, say thousand yards or twelve hundred yards, or or for the guys who are shooting twenty two long rifles uh, at four and five hundred yards, you would need to do that. Like we would think, anyways, depending on your rifle, depending. You're going to need caliber. as much adjustment as your scope can give you. <laughs> right. So I've got a 6.5 Creed more Remington 700 that I use for long range shooting. I have a 20 MOA base on it because I want to be able to utilize, um, you know, more of that adjustment range in the optic that I have in there and, and zero below that optical center so that I can dial it out. Um, same thing with the long rifle or 22 long rifle long range stuff. Uh, I've actually got a 25 MOA base on there. Hmm. Um, and, and you can get more than that. And sometimes I wish I had it to, again, cheat that zero point in the rifle scope lower so that I can utilize the top end of it. Right, exactly. And sometimes you don't need it, and it, it kind of can depend because I've got a 6.5, the Ruger American that I've used in a number of Vortex Extremes and stuff. With uh, I've even used the Diamondback Tactical 4-16, um, and I've used the Razor 5-20, to which um, gets into one uh, sort of aspect of a canted base is look at what scope you have on top, too. So as much as the rifle itself, the caliber that you're utilizing, plays into it. The scope itself that you're utilizing will play into it. If you have a scope that maybe doesn't have a ton of elevation adjustment, you may need a 20 MOA base before you even get out to 1,000 yards. It's very possible, and especially depending on how much elevation uh, was used up, or even windage can, in a weird way, use up some available elevation because we're dealing with a circle, and as you get out closer to the sides of the circle, it's uh, top to bottom is shorter. But anyways... You, you could end up needing a 20 MOA cannon base or, or larger before you even get to 1,000 a, a yards, yep. depending on your caliber or the scope if it doesn't have enough adjustment to it. But if you have a scope like the Razor 5 to 20, when I use that, that has, what, 120 MOA of mm-hmm. adjustment just inside the scope. So it was pretty good there. And even with the Diamondback Tactical first focal plane 4 to 16, that has... Um, I think we were right around 70. Yeah. Yep. It was enough to get out to actually... I was very, very close. I could have gotten out to just over 1,200 mm-hmm. yards on my 6.5 Creedmoor mm-hmm. with uh, with that scope. And were I going farther than that or wasn't go- intending to go farther than that, definitely would have wanted to cant the base then, get a canted base. Um, or if I were shooting a different caliber, like a 308, I wouldn't have been able to shoot a 308 out to 1,200 yards, right. very likely. Because right. a lot of drop right around that 1,000-yard mark, mm-hmm. it really starts to, to drop off. Mm-hmm. So it depends. Yes, a if, lot. We've seen it too. Not super common, um, but like the the makeup of the rifle itself, and, and looking at the receiver and where the islands of the base uh, or the the base is uh, attached to. If there's if there's an unintended discrepancy in the spec on let let's say the rear island, like if it's lower than it should be by even an infinitesimal amount, and you end up with a what we'd call like a misalignment in the rifle, sometimes a 20 MOA, ba- 20 MOA base can correct that too. Yes. Not necessarily with the intent of long range shooting, but just making up for a misalignment on the rifle system mm-hmm. itself. Everything performs better too when your scope is at as close to its center of yeah. travel as yep. it can be. Because when you're moving around the turrets, it's it's everybody knows when you move the turrets, you're moving the reticle around inside the scope. But what maybe some don't realize is that you're also moving around, that reticle is attached to inner, an inner erector unit, which has a lot of the lenses for your optical system in it. So when you're trying to have light bend through all these different lenses and go through and avoid chromatic aberration and make as sharp of an image as possible... Uh, you want all those lenses to be as close in alignment as possible as they can be. And uh, when you're dialing in tons of adjustment, we the engineers design in the ability for the optical system to be stretched 
down to its uh, you know outermost or, or most um, adjusted point where the erector unit may be not in its optical center, but it is best at its optical yeah. center. So you, if you threw it on there, you could have some unintended consequences to doing so if if the spirit of the rifle or the build or what you're going to be doing wasn't expressly long range. Exactly. Uh, Yeah. So, yeah, good question. Some rifles have it built in as Mm -hmm. well. So I know when Ruger came out with their RPR, and now everybody else seems to have a similar thing, you know, a chassis gun, for example, or one where the the rail continues on all the way out towards the end of the barrel and and over the barrel. Uh, They may have 20 MOA built into the rifle itself. And you'll want to note that because if you go and you get... Um, another thing we didn't even mention is there's some mounts as mm-hmm. well, scope mounts that have cant built into them. We have it, precision extended cantilever mount with 20 MOA built in or zero MOA. But if you go and think, oh, it's a 308, I need 20 MOA to get out to 1,000 yards, I'm going to put this 20 MOA mount on this gun. The gun already has 20 MOA built into it. Now you have 40 MOA canted into the rifle scope, and you may have a difficult time getting zeroed. Yeah. So if you try to go for a hundred yard zero, for example, now yep. you would have to dial the reticle physically up or down on the turrets in this case, and this is where it gets difficult to explain. But you would have to dial so much elevation just to get zeroed at a hundred yards because of that mm-hmm. can that you've put in. Yeah, we get that call quite often, um, and it usually is with a twenty MOA base. Most shooters report I'm like four to six inches high at 100 yards, and I've run out of elevation. Mm-hmm. And the first question we ask is, do you have a 20 MOA base on the gun? And if the answer is yes, well, that's where that's coming from. So at that point, you know, hey, we want to drop down to maybe a 10 MOA base, um, and you're going to gain that back. You're going to still have a whole bunch of top-end travel. Um, but, yeah, those, those unintended consequences of the 20 are not often talked about. Exactly. Yeah. And then other misalignments, too, just speaking of those, there's also like the Burris Signature Z rings. Yep. That's another cant yep. system yep. in a way that can actually cant the scope in any direction, yep. pretty much, right? Yep. I actually, Not even just straight up and down, but yep. side to side. And I had an install the other day on a pre-64 Model 70 um, that the holes on the top of the receiver, uh, when it was drilled and tapped, uh, weren't square. And so we used those rings to correct a left-to-right adjustment. Yeah. Um, so when, when we had mounted it up, the first time we discovered this, um, it ran the entire windage out of the rifle scope completely to the wall. And we couldn't get zeroed up and down then because of that. So we put those rings on there, straightened it out. Mm-hmm. And uh, that user was actually very close to optical center when we were done with that. So that that's awesome. Worked out really well. Yeah, I think a lot of times, you know, so 20 MOA bases, canted bases get th- thrown out there a lot when you're talking about long range. And like we said, it's it's very possible that it may make perfect sense for you if you're shooting long range, but that that aspect of actually utilizing some sort of canting method, whether it's straight up and down or in the case of those kinds of rings or some other systems that are maybe out there uh, in all different axes or, or directions, um, the uh, method of correcting for a misalignment in the rifle is, is one that's often not thought of. Yep. Um, and this isn't, this isn't a dig on rifle manufacturers by any means at all. Um, but you know, when you're dealing with something that is a precision instrument connected to another precision instrument and both of them have to line up and, uh, there's a lot of variables and tolerances all stacked on top of one another, chances are they're not going to be absolutely perfect. And, I think a lot of times people often just assume everything's going to yeah. be perfect when, yep. you know, yeah. it's not necessarily the case. And small little misalignments make huge errors downrange. Mm-hmm. One degree is 60 minutes of angle. It's which true. Is huge. All you have to do is look at, and we have the luxury of doing stuff like this because we work for Vortex, but if you look at and you ever saw a reticle outside of the scope, not inside of it, and you see how tiny yeah. it is. And you try to even bring it up to your eye and close enough or whatever. You put your reading glasses on or something. You try to see those individual hash marks, even some of the bigger features on a yeah. reticle. And you realize holding it in your hand, you can hardly see those. But then when they go inside the scope, they can correlate to, you know, two, four, six, eight, ten, thirty 10, 30 MOA, you yep. know, a bunch of mills, whatever. Uh, you realize how tiny things can be to cause. Yep big things or big changes downrange. Absolutely. One last thing I'll throw out there too. 20 MOA, ba- 20 MOA base. Can it be used with MRAD scopes? Mm-hmm. 100%. Yes. Yep. So when we say MOA or MRAD, 
Um, and that's a really common question too, actually. In fact, we get that a couple times a month. Folks call up, they're like, I bought an MRAD scope. Can I put that base on there? Mm-hmm. You, you can convert MOA to MRAD, simple calculation, and vice versa. It, all we're doing is we're, we're just biasing that scope. It's not going to affect anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, there are some base manufacturers out of Europe that actually list the degree of cant or the amount of cant, rather, in MRAD as opposed to MOA because that's a more common. Yeah, it's just, yeah. that's European MOA. Yep. I mean, we're, yep. MOA over here is sort of like miles per hour. It's yep. like inches. It's whatever. Um, but, yeah, it, it it came down to somewhere around 5.8 mils, yep, I right think, in there. 20 MOA is. So. Uh, hopefully this helped you guys out. Um, explaining sometimes the internals of a scope and all this geometry that goes on is a, is a bit difficult, but we did our best. So if you have any other questions, definitely let us know. Give us a call. Uh, all the folks on the phone are uh, always happy to help out with that kind of thing. and Or hit us up on social media, too, and we can chat it over. Whatever works best for you, I think we're going to try and do a little video on some of this stuff as well. So uh, stay tuned for that, and let us know if there's any other topics that you want to hear in 10-ish minutes or more in this case. But we would love to do that. Thank you, Ryan, for joining us. And we'll see you all next time. See you. Bye.